last night has thousands of people scratching their heads. Video matches the descriptions offered by witness after witness. Downtown Phoenix at 8 o'clock, 8.30, over a mile long in our transit. After the meeting was over, one of the deputy city managers came over to me and said, you shouldn't have asked that question. And I said, why? And he said, well, you just opened Pandora's box. They didn't want to deal with it. March 13th, 1997, a normal evening in Phoenix, Arizona. But what began as an ordinary night would soon be remembered as one of the most mysterious UFO sightings in history. Thousands of people, pilots, police officers, and even the governor claim to have witnessed something extraordinary. I have yet to see the military roll out one of these off the production line. And when they do, I'll kiss the president's ass. But until then, that object is alien spacecraft in my opinion. This is the story of the Phoenix Lights. The story begins just after sunset in the small town of Paulden, Arizona. At around 7.30 p.m., witnesses reported seeing a massive V-shaped formation of lights moving silently across the sky. The lights were too large, too precise to be anything ordinary. Described as a craft larger than any known aircraft, witnesses in the surrounding towns reported seeing five distinct lights in a V formation. Over time, these lights would traverse the Arizona sky, moving from Paulden toward Phoenix, captivating everyone who gazed up. By 8.15 p.m., the lights had reached the skies over Phoenix. Thousands of people across the city, including law enforcement officers, saw the mysterious formation. What I'm looking at here is a light on South Mountain. You can see this light flickering over our mountain over here. Looking at the light that's now appeared again, it's come out in a different place. Definitely far away, South Mountain. There's two of them. Peter, we finally hit Peter. Now we've got two of them in the sky on South Mountain. South Mountain, figure this one out. There's a double. There's a third one. Hey, Sue. All right, you tell me what it is. Oh, what do we got? Hey, Sue! Take a look at this. We're now looking at the same scene that we were looking at at the nighttime. I'll give you the angle and idea of the surroundings and what we saw at night. And the mountains where the lights appeared to be. The lights were so bright and clear that people froze in their tracks transfixed by an overwhelming sense of wonder and fear. The craft was described by many as massive, with five orbs of light that glowed in the night sky. But what was even more unsettling was the silence. The object moved without making a sound, as though it were gliding effortlessly through the sky. In the aftermath of the event, the US Air Force would come forward to explain the lights. Their response? Military flares. Our A-10 Thunderbolts that are right behind me were on a night illumination exercise over the very Goldwater Range Complex uh, southwest of Phoenix, and they were dropping high-intensity flares that deploy on a little parachute and uh, descend to the Earth. And we think that those flares were mistakenly uh, called UFOs by the folks in the, in the valley in Phoenix there. According to the Air Force, the lights were nothing more than flares dropped by A-10 Warthog aircraft during a routine training exercise at the Barry Goldwater Range. But for many, this explanation didn't align with what they had seen. Witnesses argued that flares would fall in a chaotic, inconsistent manner, 
but the Phoenix Lights remained in a rigid, V-shaped formation. Furthermore, the object that passed over Phoenix seemed solid and structured, blotting out the stars as it moved overhead. The Phoenix Lights took an even stranger turn when Governor Fife Symington entered the picture. At first, Symington treated the event lightly, holding a press conference where one of his staff members dressed up as an alien to mock the incident. I'm too close to me, please. <laughs> But what many didn't know at the time was that Symington himself had seen the lights. Years later, he admitted that he too had witnessed the massive V-shaped craft and was left just as baffled as everyone else. This event called Lights Over Phoenix, what did you see? Well, I saw a, uh, a huge craft just kind of come right over Squaw Peak. Um, that was, you know, it was just breathtaking. And um, I, I'm not sure about the, the date. You've, you've got a better memory March for the 13. dates than I do. Yeah. But there was no, like the Clinton day, no? No. <laughs> no. I was on a strict diet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm serious now. That, that it was a, it was a, U, unquestionably it was a UFO, which means unidentified flying object. Right. Doesn't nothing, mean we're being visited. Well, it's nothing like anything I've ever seen. And, and you're an Air Force guy. Yeah, yeah, and a pilot. Uh, got a lot of hours flying. So uh, it was pretty breathtaking. And, um, and I'll never forget, I, I snuck out to see it um, you know, without DPS, um, which I, I'm not supposed to be driving my own car and that kind oh, of thing. Yeah. And so, uh, but I told Ann what I was doing. I was going to go up to Squaw Peak and see what everybody was, you know, clamoring about. And um, when I walked in the front door, she looked at me, and I was apparently just, normally I'm fair complected and pale anyway, right? And she said, oh my gosh, she said, she'd look like a ghost. What, what, what did you see? And I said, well, I don't know what I saw, but it's, it was really something, and I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> the debate only deepened as more people came forward with their own sightings, each adding a new layer to the mystery. There's these bank of lights, six lights, in the shape of a triangle going back right over the airport and I'm looking at them as I'm coming in I'm you know on the on the horn talking to them and I'm coming in and I, I'm not saying anything about it because I'm kind of confused by it but it, I can't tell if this is going to be an issue or not with landing and Oliver said uh, hey Pa what are those lights and it was and I said yeah I don't know I don't know what they are and so anyway I called up the tower and I said what are you guys painting tonight over the over the airport and they said we're not showing anything. What, what are you seeing? I said, well, there's six lights in a row. And they said, do you want to report this? And I said, I, look, it, I, I can't identify it. It's flying and it's six objects. <laughs> so that's what it is, right? So we landed. I dropped him off, flew home. Years later, I come, I come home and Goldie's watching this show on UFOs. And the most reported one of all time was this one in Phoenix. And I'm watching, I start to see this show, and I said, wait a minute, that's the night Ollie and I were landing in Phoenix. I remember that. Get the fuck out of here. That's not flares. <laughs> like, those things are not dropping. They're just hovering there. Yeah. It's very strange. Yeah, I mean, flares, it, it doesn't look like flare, flare to me, also, the way flares illuminate. Right. The way they radiate light. Um, well, it could be some different kind of flare. Possible. Or, I mean, it could be, instead of a flare, it could be some sort of massive led light because the, this the sheer size too when you look at them hovering over the city you have to take into account that if you look at that image right there you have to take into account everything you're looking down there is buildings and windows and street lights and all that jazz those things have to be massive to make that much illumination while they're in the sky yep. if you just had a flashlight and you were hanging a flashlight in the sky like what, what is that, a thousand feet in the air or so who knows whatever it is probably a thousand feet couple thousand feet if you had a couple thousand feet up in the air and you had a flashlight you could barely see that thing absolutely right no, no way you, you wouldn't see it like that whatever yeah. that is hovering over that city that's bizarre and whatever that is it was seen by people uh hundreds of miles in both directions yeah so it wasn't just phoenix it was reported in the, in the sequencing uh all all fits in terms there was something that appeared to be flying down from nevada entered northwestern arizona continued over phoenix and and then down south and people along that pathway were reporting this hundreds of people yeah and this we were watching the video it just stays there 
Like it's not dropping. Yeah, and uh, this one's not moving, which is curious too. Yeah, if it was going to drop, it would. I mean, if it was just dropped out of a plane as a flare, I mean, for sure, it'd be way lower by now. <laughs> like those things are flying, whatever that is. The, Look at her. The She's flares I have seen in military <laughs> exercises dropped pretty steady, pretty steady rate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's pretty clear. That's you know, it looks like something dropping. That's yeah. something hovering. Over two decades have passed since the Phoenix Lights incident, yet the mystery remains unsolved. In 2020, the U.S. government released reports confirming the existence of unidentified aerial phenomena. But whether these sightings connect to the Phoenix Lights has yet to be determined. Could the Phoenix Lights have been part of a larger hidden phenomenon? Or was it simply a case of misidentified military flares? As more declassified documents come to light, one thing remains certain, the truth is still out there. What we've covered here is just the surface of the Phoenix Lights mystery. There are so many more witness accounts, theories, and strange details that would take hours to unpack fully. But what do you think? I'd love to hear your thoughts, so drop a comment below. And if you want to dive deeper into more unsolved mysteries, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. There's a lot more to explore.